What's up YouTube? Welcome to this video. My name is Cara Janelle. As you see by the topic, it's called Destiny Transfers. So this is something that it was really like on my mind. I feel like the Holy Spirit impressed upon me like a few weeks ago, just a lot about Destiny Transfers. I kept coming across the term and the more that I really like tuned in to what I felt the Holy Spirit was saying to me, he was like revealing to me Things about destiny transfers. And if you don't know what a destiny transfer is, it's we all have this purpose and this calling that God has placed upon our life. You know, the Bible tells us before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. So he knew us before we were here on this physical earth and he had desires for us. He has these plans and these wills. And there's another scripture that said, I consecrated you before you were in your mother's womb. And that's like I, that consecrate means to set aside you know, to sanctify, to set aside for a purpose, to set aside like I'm going to use you. And he has these wills and these purposes and these plans for each and every one of us that he placed inside of us. And there are, of course, adversaries acting out what the enemy desires to be for our life and st basically to get us off of what God's purpose is and our plan and his plan for us. And to get us in tune of what the enemy wants. Because a lot of us have these huge callings that we don't even know about. It may not be, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, to be honest. Whatever God has called you to do, God has called you for that for a purpose. And more than likely, it's to reach other people to whatever it might be. If you bake cookies, you know, you might meet people and you might come across them. And you being a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ operating in his spirit. This is going to witness to other people that, you know, may just see his spirit operating in you and decide to come to the faith. And you don't even know who that person might bring to the faith just because of you operating in what it is that God has called you to do. And he has these purposes and these callings for all of us. So of course there's an adversary trying to hinder it. And we're going to go into the word of God and I'm going to show you that there are particular people who have purposes in the Bible. I'm talking about they have this purpose and this plan and there were things against them from the very beginning. And this video is not only just to bring, you know, a little light to that term as far as people who may not have heard of it or who may be facing obstacles and they don't understand why. Like, OK, I know God called me to do this or I know God wants me to do this. God revealed unto me whatever way he speaks unto you that this is a part of his plan for me to do. And then you face so much resistance to us to the point where you're like, well, did God really say this or does God really want me to do this? Or maybe I'm going the wrong way about it. Like all the, the confusion that the enemy throws at people to try to hinder them from doing what it is that God called them to do. This is all a part of the enemy's plan to get you up off the plan and the purpose that God has for you. We're going to go into the Bible for this. And we're going to start with, of course, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because this one was so prominent. And from the very beginning, from the very beginning, there were adversaries against him. And it starts in Matthew chapter two. And I'm just going to read from the Bible in Matthew chapter two. I'm going to read from the King James um, version of the Bible, starting at verse one. It says, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod, the king, had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it was written by the prophet. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed and lo, the star which they saw in the east 
went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly great joy. They rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worship him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream, they should that they should not return to Harad. They departed into their own country another way. OK, so that's up to verse number 12 in Matthew chapter two. Verses 1 through 12. So in this particular part of the Bible, it's telling us that as soon as Jesus was born, as soon as he was birthed out, right, there were wise men that recognized his star. And sometimes we hear this star like you might hear the term, um, you know, the star, my star or my glory. Basically, these wise men recognize this star in the sky and this star was implementative of who Jesus was. And they were like, oh, the king of the Jews is born. I got to go worship. We got to go worship the king of the Jews. And this is as he's a baby just born. Can't you know when babies are born, they can't even talk yet. They Some babies don't even open their eyes on the first day. But it, at this point in time, as soon as Jesus was born, these wise men are like, no, nah, we got to go worship this baby because this baby has already been proclaimed king of the Jews. This baby has already has a, a reputation. And this baby has done, hasn't done anything physically yet, just the fact that he was born. So when it comes to things like destiny transfers, people, you have had a purpose since you were birthed out. Since you made it here in this physical earth, you have had a calling. You have had a purpose. If it's pertaining to you, this is like you've had this calling, this purpose. God has predestined you, predestined, meaning you've been destined before predestined you to do these things and there were hindrances then so in that passage of scripture Harad who was the king at the time when he heard it says when he heard these things he was troubled like he started getting like oh the king of the Jews is born you know what's what's what are you what's gonna happen to me I'm the king right now there's a baby born that they're already proclaiming king of the Jews he was troubled about it and it said all Jerusalem was troubled with him right so he's like where are those wise men at? Let me speak to those wise men that are saying this, that they got to go worship this baby, the king, right? And after he spoke to the wise men, he's like, okay, well, go find the baby and then come back and tell me because I want to go worship him too. But if you read further down in chapter two of Matthew, Harad had evil intentions. Harad basically, you know, he wasn't trying to go worship the baby. He had evil intentions because he felt some type of way that people were already calling um, baby Jesus king of the Jews. So what I want to really make a point of here is that when Jesus was born, he already had this calling. He already was predestined to do something and it was perceived that he was going to be great even as a baby. But just like um, these wise men were able to perceive that he was going to be great, you know, People who work evilly or they work in the demonic, they operate in familiar spirits, whatever it is, they may be able to, to see that someone's going to be great also. And they send these hindrances and not all these hindrances are coming from if you're going through some like in your life, you're going through this where there's hindrances and adversaries. Not all of it's witchcraft. Sometimes, sometimes it's God ordained trials and tribulations because in order for you to get to your destiny, you have to go through things. You, you, you have to be tried. You have to be tested. You have to go through things so God knows, like, okay, I can trust this purpose, this person with this purpose. But you know he knows the end from the beginning anyway. So he predestined people, but it's like your your flesh and your your spirit man has to get built up. But nevertheless, these wise men spoke to the king, and the king's like, Yeah, um, show me where this baby's at. Go go find the baby, then come back and tell me where he is so I can go worship him. But of course he had evil intentions. And I'm bringing this part up because People who are trying to walk out God's, God's calling or trying to fulfill the destiny that the Lord has for them, trying to, you know, walk in the spirit of the Lord in order to do what it is that he's called them to do. You're going to face hindrance. You're going to face adversaries. You're going to face people coming against you, 
of course they're being operating they're being led by spirits that are operating to do the will of the enemy to try and hinder you and stop you but the thing is there are some times when people go above and beyond above and beyond to try to hinder people when we read further down in matthew chapter 2 i'm going to start at verse 13 and i'm going to go down and when they departed they were departed being the wise men behold the angel of the lord appeared to joseph in a dream saying arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into egypt and be thou there until i bring thee word for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And when he arose, well, okay, that's that's really all we need right there. So in verse number 13, it's telling us that Herod was seeking to destroy this young child because it was already proclaimed that he was going to be the king of the Jews because people were already going to worship him. His, his star or his glory was already revealed in a sense that, okay, this, this, this baby, this child is going to be great. So, Harad was going to seek to kill the young child. So, in this physical day or in our personal lives, I should say, you may have hindrances. You may have people coming against you. And the purpose that they're coming against you for is because they want to stop the purpose. They want to stop you from doing what it is that God predestined you to do because... If they stop you, let's just use a scenario. If they stop you, let's say God has called you to bring whatever he's called you to do in whatever way, shape, form, or fashion. But let's say it's going to bring a thousand people to his kingdom. Just for instance. Now, let's say those thousand people that get brought to, to the light of the Lord, of course, through his Holy Spirit. But based off of however it is you witness to them, whatever it is. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know the mind of God. The, the word even tells us like our thoughts are his thoughts and our ways aren't his ways. We don't even know. But let's just say that's the case. Then imagine those a thousand people, they reach a hundred people each. That's 10,000 people. So if the enemy can stop you from doing what it is that God predestined you to do, it stops you from bringing someone else into the fold. It stops you from, of course, like being led by the Holy Spirit from it stops you from from witnessing to them or whatever the case may be so that they can receive. So in this particular passage in Matthew chapter two, we see the adversary, which was Herod at the time, of course, being led by spirits of the enemy because he probably was being led in pride, like, OK, well, I'm the king. He probably was being led and, you know, a lot, some enviousness, enviousness and jealousy. Like, okay, well, why are they trying to worship this baby? I'm the king right now. And the Bible even tells us that it troubled him. So those are all spirits of the enemy because those are not the fruits of the spirit. So nevertheless, he was going to seek to kill the baby. And the Bible goes on to tell us, and for sake, I won't read that part. Well, actually, I read verse number 16. Then Hurrah, when he had saw that he was mocked of the wise men was exceedingly wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. So Herod so desperately since the wise men didn't come back he's like well i'm just going to kill all the babies that are under two years old in hopes that he would kill baby jesus which is just wild but this was all an attempt to stop or transfer the destiny when i say destiny transfers i'm saying to either hinder to stop to exchange it um imagine if they're saying, okay, this is going to be keys to king of the Jews, baby Jesus being born, the Herod probably thought, well, if he doesn't make it to be the king of the Jews, then I'll still continue to be king. That's all like, that's like a transfer. Like, okay, well, this person won't get it and they'll have a position or alter it in a way that it doesn't perform the way it was ordained to perform. So the enemy is using these tactics the, the, in this day and age to do these things to hinder people that God has a calling for. And of course, when the Lord was speaking to me about this, I had to really like look up 
people in the Bible who were experienced these things or were affected by these things. Of course, it wasn't successful when it came to Jesus, when they were trying to kill him as a baby. It didn't happen. But we see other people in the Bible who face these scenarios. If you think of... um. Yeah, if you think of Esau and Jacob. Now, if you remember in the book of Genesis, um, which I'll have to link the exact chapter and verses below. But if you remember that Jacob kept trying to get Esau to sell his birthright. And he did it or actually on more than one occasion. Like when I was reading about it, he was like, okay, um, yeah, I'll, basically I'll trade you this for my birthright. And Esau at one point was like, why do you even... Why do you even want it? Why do you even want my birthright so bad? And of course, we know the story where he traded it for like some stew or some pottage or whatever it was. And although nothing drastically happened right then in the spirit realm, how powerful words are and agreement is, eventually it did happen. But this was a destiny transfer in a sense. But also this was prophesied that this was going to happen, that the... um. The older was so served the younger. It was prophesied that it was going to happen. And then we see further on when Isaac, was it Isaac? I think it was Isaac was about to pass away. He was getting old and he was going to bless Esau with all these things that Jacob and his mother came up with this scheme to, you know, make the dad believe that, make the, the dad believe that Jacob was Esau in order for him to, proclaim all those blessings that he was going to proclaim over Esau over Jacob. Now this is a transfer, meaning everything that was meant for Esau at that time. And I want to mind you, I'm saying this was prophesied that it was going to happen. It was said in the word before it happened that this was going to happen because I know people might get riled up and be like, Oh yeah, I'm not even going to go there. But anyway, anyway, it was prophesied that it was going to happen, but everything that was going to be spoken over e and I'm saying it was prophesied that it was going to happen, meaning it was supposed to be this way in this particular instant. But we see that everything that was going to be prophesied over Esau was actually prophesied over Jacob, which meant it was transferred to Jacob versus Esau. The destiny that Esau would have had when his father proclaimed all those blessings, saying, bless you'll be in this way and all these things, it went to Jacob, which is a transfer. And the only reason I'm bringing this story up is because we see this instance in the Bible. So although this was biblically done, although it was prophesied to be that way, there is, of course, adversaries demonically working to try to transfer people's destinies for their own selfish gain and their selfish reasons. And then also pertaining unto Jacob, we see further on in the Bible, he got tricked because he wanted to marry... Rachel, right? He wanted to marry Rachel and he had to work all these years under Laban in order and Laban was doing him wrong and all these things like that in order to get Rachel. And after he worked the time and he's like, okay, I want to marry my wife. Um, the Laban tricked him. Laban was like, okay, when he's supposed to like go in and consecrate create the marriage with his wife, the, the father sent Leah in there because he was like, well, Leah's older. And in that time when it was like, okay, you had to take care of these daughters until marriage. He was like, she's older. According to the word, she didn't look as good or her eye was like lazy or something like that. So Laban, for his own selfish reasons, sent Leah in there in order for Jacob to consecrate the marriage with Leah, making Leah his wife. And Jacob got tricked in that sense, which is also like, if you want to go deep into it, Leah ended up, you know, birthing all these sons, birthing all these sons for Jacob, birth, birthing all these sons. And Rachel, the one who he originally um, was trying to marry, what she did end up marrying after working more years under Laban in order to get her, she was barren. And then you have to think like, was there a destiny transfer there? Was there a sense of like, well, the Bible tells us that God opened Leah's womb because she was hated. Cause she like, of course she was hated. Jacob didn't like her. He probably didn't like the way things went down that he was kind of forced into marrying her and all those things like that. And God opened her womb, but that that's another destiny transfer there because 
he was attempting to do one thing, right? Attempting to do one thing, marry this, this woman and got swindled or tricked into marrying a different lady. Anyway, I'm bringing all this up um, just because this term destiny transfer was really, really, you know, in my spirit for like two weeks ago. And I'm trying to, you know, put out some videos that I should have put out a while ago. But nevertheless, um, mainly just make this a prayer point. If you feel like you're someone that's up against people trying to take your destiny or your glory and Another thing that was going on with me was like having all these crazy dreams, dreams of like people giving me their clothes or things like that, which was indicative of what the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about at that time, like where destiny transfers, where people are trying to like exchange your destiny or, ex or like change it, alter it. Anyway, if this is something that you're going through and you think you're experiencing, of course, take it to the Lord, go into the word read the word and make it a prayer point, make it a prayer point. Like just how the Bible tells us Jesus had this star that the wise men see. You could pray, you know, Lord, cover my star in your blood. Let your glory rest upon me. Let the attacks of the enemy fall and fail and let the counsel of the Lord prevail. What it is that you say about me, Lord Jesus. What it is that you predestined for me, Lord Jesus. Let that prevail. Let your word prevail. And let the plots and plans of the enemy fall to none and fall to nothing. You can make it a prayer point. And the Bible also tells us, you know, once the Lord sent forth his word out of his mouth, it's not going to return into him void. So these things that he predestined to do, for you to do, they're going to come to pass if you stick with the Lord. So don't give up just because of the attacks. Don't fall. Don't fold. Just keep walking with the Lord. And even if you're coming up against, against attacks against your life, the Bible even tells us, you know, we shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. You could pray that too. Until next time, I'm Cardinal. Bye.